very difficult and very complicated. Because just like the diet industry, there are hundreds of different people with hundreds of different opinions about what you should put in your mouth at that next meal. But in this video, I thought I would share some insights from having read 25 books on wellness and healing. And I think it would be helpful if I shared two of my main key insights. Hey, I'm Dr. Alex Hine, Chinese medicine doctor and licensed acupuncturist, author of the wellness book, Master the Day, which is on Amazon and Audible. I've included two very important links right below this video. The first link is for a free guide, which is four daily rituals that can help you add years to your life with traditional Chinese medicine. And the second is if you'd like to become a patient of mine, either locally or online via telemedicine, you can get the info to my clinic in the description bio below, as well as my email. You know, a big thing that I realized, a big commonality reading all these books, as well as personally having gone through that healing or disease illness journey multiple times, is that at the end of the day, it is a hero's journey. You know, this idea of the hero's journey was popularized by Joseph Campbell, and he talks about how there is this progression that is not necessarily a progression, but there is this predictable cycle that happens where you get the call of adventure, right? You get the call, I'm sick. That is the call. That is the wake up call or the calling. But then a person can refuse the call. They can say, this is my dream. This is my passion. I'm going to be a writer. I'm going to be a doctor. I'm going to be alternative, whatever it is. And then because of fear, or because of what dad said, or because of what mom said, or the hater spouse that plays it safe, whatever comes up, that can lead to a refusal of the call. This is what I know I must do, but I'm too afraid. But my dad said, always chase money. But my mom said, you'll never be able to succeed. We always fail in this family. You get the call. In this case, the call is for healing. Now, you may not even try it because maybe you went to all the doctors and all the conventional doctors of your time and your era and your location say, it cannot be treated. This is all there is. This is standard of care. This is your 12% chance of surviving. It's terminal. Whatever it is, that is a piece of the calling and the refusal of the call. You've tried your best. You've seen the experts. And now you've resigned yourself to not trying anymore. But beyond that, what we forget about this epic hero's journey in every movie is that there is always a period of trials and tribulations. There is always a period where it's frustrating, you hate it, it's difficult, you fail, you fail 50 times, 100 times, years and years and years and years and years of trying and never getting the one thing you want to have happen. It never works out. And that is a necessary prerequisite piece of the hero's journey. Of the sick journey is, I try, I fail, I try, I fail, I try, I fail. One doctor, two doctor, three dollar, six doctors, alternative doctor, whatever. All of these are necessary in that hero's journey to realize your own healing. You know, I know people who've done everything healthy and right and at 16 years old developed leukemia. I know people who did everything wrong and they live to be 85 and they smoke daily and they drink moderately heavily and they don't have a very particularly specialized diet. It doesn't mean those factors don't matter or affect health. It just means that's the hero's journey. That's the combination of genetic inborn factors as well as personal choices and decisions. Some we made, some were just things that happened to us. So here we are, gone through the hero's journey. The main thing I notice reading all these texts and all these books is that for each person, their healing journey is a hero's journey. It can never be replaced. It is so wholly unique that it is not something that you can predict or compare or whatever it is, getting caught up in blame. Why is this happening to me? I eat healthy. He never ate healthy. He's fine. doesn't matter. It's a non-question because your hero's journey is going to be totally different from somebody else's. Now, the second thing I've come to realize from reading all these books is lots of the pathology of the modern human, the materially wealthy, but the spiritually bankrupt, if I can use that term, or psycho-emotionally tormented, existentially angsty, I could come up with a lot of terms, our primary pathology for a lot of us is not just what we see with diabetes and heart disease and cancer related to our diets, but is also related to the state of the current human spirit. Now, what's very interesting is when you look back through history, you see that the texts of the doctors, the books that are popular, the lectures that are popular, the schools and organizations that are popular 
reflect the malaise, the illness of the times. So maybe a hundred years ago, doctors were heavily focused on infectious disease, getting tuberculosis and measles and smallpox and all of these illnesses that were really severe killers of humans under control. That was the focus. And now in this era, this modern era, we see a lot of psycho-emotional, a lot of psycho-emotional illness of anxiety and depression being the highest potentially they've ever been. And it's only getting worse. And the medication prescription has gotten skyrocketing and these rates are still increasing. So you tend to see that the texts that come out and the, the impassioned rants of the physicians of the times reflect the dominant malaise of the humans of that era. The big one for us now being anxiety, depression, our life materially being well, but inwardly not feeling very well. And that's a very interesting paradox. You look at the books on spirituality and religion and purpose and meaning, Viktor Frankl, Man's Search for Meaning, all of these are an attempt to access those higher states of Maslow's hierarchy because we have our base level needs met, certainly in the first world, the developed countries, and we're not starving. We're not likely to die of infectious disease. We can have kids and not worry about them dying for the most part. And so what humans struggle with the most is our feeling of a persistent lack of meaning in our lives. The why should I show up to a job 12 hours a day to come home to a home that's all right, to just work so hard at something I don't even like, to build a life that frankly I don't even like. It's like a circular loop of logic. I'm going to work harder to exist in a place I don't really care about because my life is okay and I'm just going to work harder to, to build that okay life. I've noticed that a lot of the content of the books today have this yin-yang of the material, which is usually diet and exercise, right? That's like the big material bucket. And then the other bucket, which is the psycho-emotional, which is on anxiety and depression. But even then, lots of those authors just focus on a material approach to anxiety and depression, not analyzing what is it about the life of the modern human that leads to this? And so I think just general buckets, the two main things I've learned are that first and foremost, your journey of building a fulfilling, healing life is going to be your own hero's journey, which means it's going to be messy as hell. And it's not going to look like anybody else's, but you still need to accept the call if you want to heal. The second thing is that for the modern human, Psycho-emotional health, if you want to call it that, should become one of the dominant things we focus on besides, you know, exercise and diet, because all of them are intimately related. And I would advise someone not to think that these are material things. Treat them as, what is it about the modern human's life and the way one lives that is so divorced from the way we were supposed to live? And a good last thought here is look at the way the European quality of life is and the way of life is versus the modern American way of life. So I want to leave you with this, which is that the modern human not only struggles with, of course, diet and exercise, but really those intense needs of the human spirit that are not being met. Now, maybe for you, it's loneliness. Maybe for another person, it's they hate their job. Maybe for another person, it's the crushing stress of supporting a family. Maybe for somebody else, it's they feel like there's a thing they've always wanted to do, but they've never trusted or been brave enough to do it. My call to action for this video is to listen to those things and figure out what the missing piece is in your life. All right, guys. So if you'd like to stay in touch, again, there's a free guide right below this video. Four daily rituals that can possibly help you add years to your life with traditional Chinese medicine. And if you'd like to become a patient of mine, either locally or online via telemedicine, the link below this video has a link to my clinic and contact info to get a hold of me and the people at my clinic. All right. Before you go, I have two related videos right here.